Um, we have two Kiras today. Two Kiras. Kira and Kira. It's outstanding. I mean... I mean, how many Kira, How many Kiras have you met in your life? I don't think I've met... I've heard of people, like people who would say, I have a daughter named Kira. But oh, never right. actually meeting, I don't think, the person in person. Oh. Just I hearing like about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm your first Kira. Yeah. <laughs> on, and you come on a podcast with another Kira. Yeah. It's true, really, actually. I mean, what a, what a crazy world. And we both like know that. this gentleman. So you know two Kiras. <laughs> Kira and Kira. Nuts. Crazy. Anyways. Anyways. We're, all, we're back. Welcome. We're all healthy. We're here. Yes. We're, we're healthy. Back. Took a couple weeks off. Launch Radio is back. And we have a very, very special guest today. Her name is Kira Sherman. She is an intuition coach and speaker. She is from Los Angeles and North Carolina. And she shares how to be certain of every decision you make by knowing what's real in your mind and the powers of intuition, your ultimate built-in certainty. She supported countless people over the past five years to realize the courage to live your infinite possibilities and ultimately know yourself and your own intuition. Her website, thedeeperspark.com, encourages people to find their deeper spark, and she emphasizes that perhaps day-to-day struggles people have may not be inside of them, but rather a product of not following your deeper spark and also understanding what's called the decisive person's secret. She has a coaching program and, and has been featured on Tiny Buddha, Living Holy, and Mind Valley, among many other, other locations. The, her per, online program offers three to six month coaching packages designed to peel back the layers of limited beliefs and judgments so that one becomes more real and free to be themselves without question of worrying what's going to happen. But instead, life becomes an effortless dance of following your intuition as it guides you ultimately to know what this life is really about. And Kira, glad to have you here. Which one? Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I had to do that. (laughs) That's going to make this fun. Sorry, my bad. It's going to be fun. Anyways, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you, guys. I appreciate being here. This is fun. (laughs) Um, There's a lot to that. Maybe you can unpack like everything that Jeff decided to read because there's a <laughs> lot there. It's interesting hearing it read out loud, yeah. you know, that's it. I'm like, Oh, interesting. Yeah, you know, you, do? you write these things. <laughs> I know. Right? Right. Like, is that what I do? Do yeah. I do that? That's me. They're talking about me. Kira. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know where to start. Like what thread to kind of pull out of that. I mean, the, the basic thing that, that is intuition is something that I've been, been following personally for, the past, you know, eight to 10 years. And if you don't want to call it intuition, uh, you know, or just use some other words like your, your gut feeling. And and most people can identify with that, Mm. you know, like, oh yeah, I just, I just knew, or I just had a sense, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever they, they, they go, or, or usually they, somebody will, I'll meet somebody at a dinner party and they'll say, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And they'll usually tell me this elaborate story of something that happened to them. They're like, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. And I go, yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's just, you know, how do you use that in, in your everyday? How do you trust it? How do you make a decision decisively using the clarity of that you have built in with intuition and, and really the patience to give decisions a, a lot of space because that's what, you know, the main thing of the that course is about is like most people either run they don't feel that they're decisive, and that's because probably they're not totally connected to their intuition. But also, some people are very decisive, but they're de- decisive in a control way. Mm. It's like, I need to make this decision, boom, I'm making the decision. They, they're not really sensing whether it's the right decision for them. Is mm. it a true decision? They don't, they want to circumvent their emotional process around that and just be like, well, I don't really want to deal with that, so I'm making a decision, boom. I'm breaking up with my boyfriend because he did this, you know, or like, yeah. it's like, well, hang on a second. What do you really feel? Like what, what's really going on here? Like, and, and giving, you know, that decision. So, so mainly if I were to break down what I do, it's, it's supporting people to know themselves through their intuition, to feel mm-hmm. certain, to not need to make decisions just because they're feeling a moment of insecurity or discomfort, uh, which is, which is where I find a lot of people will make very rash decisions. Cause it's like, no, I don't want to feel this. So, right. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. But it, it, it goes a lot deeper than that. It, it almost sounds like there's... So there's different ways people 
handle their own intuition is what it sounds like you're saying like some people avoid it what's going on them in them inside of them or some people um kind of fake it a little bit there, there's different ways people or some people don't even know own... what intuition feels like to know if, how to pursue it right well as, as a pilates uh instructor mm-hmm. sometimes uh you know yoga, Pilates, running, whatever connects you to the body is is really important for intuition because a lot of times people are making decisions from their head. It's like, well, what's the logical thing for me to do? You know, rather than sensing from a, you know, your intuition is usually in your body. And so for people who don't spend a lot of time in their body or don't have a familiarity with what it feels like, that's why that's why they say that women are, are more intuitive than men. It's not true at all. But a lot of women are more connected with their emotions. They're connected with their body. And so, which is where you feel your emotions. And for a lot of people, especially women who don't do that or are very, you know, logical and analytical, I mean, you still have a sense of your intuition, but but your intuition is is really in this space here. It's, mm-hmm. It really takes you to kind of, you know, when, when people talk about like their center, yeah. you know, I'm feeling centered around this. Like usually that means they're, they're connected mm-hmm. to their body. Their you know, core. that's where you, yeah, that's yeah. where you feel your intuition. That's where you get the sense of... I know maybe I should do this thing, but I really won't, you know, sense to do this thing, you know, and, and it's not logical. And so for a lot of people, they don't realize why they should mm-hmm. do that sense, you know, mm-hmm. let me tell you a story. Can I tell you guys a story? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I think this stories. is going to, I think me this too. is going to clear this up. This is one of my favorite stories of all time. It's a little bit long, but I'm going to try to keep it short. No, no, I love it. Okay, so I'm living in New York City, and I just started my business coaching for the first time on my own. I'd done a few different things in, in New York, whatever, and so obviously I was really throwing myself in, into this business. I had a lot of pressure. I had bills to take care of. You know, I was on my own. It was just me, and I had started my business maybe two, three weeks before that. I was submitting, you know, all these things to different podcasts, to blogs, you know, doing all this stuff. I was really busy, really concentrated, really focused. And I just, Friday came and it hit me. My intuition was like, put your technology away for the weekend. Now, technology is my computer, my speakers, my, all the things. Put it down in the basement. And my first thought was like, really? (laughs) I was planning on working all weekend. Like I'm under all this pressure, you know, like, fuck you. Sorry. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse on this podcast. Um, But you know, like, I don't really want to do that. Why would I do that? That doesn't make sense for me right now because I'm under all this pressure, whatever. But I'm, I'm, I know enough to sense like I'm going to follow this. Okay. But then the next thought was like, okay, but what if my parents try and get a hold of me? Like all the limitations, right? I referenced mm-hmm. that in, in the bio thing. All the limitations come up and give me a laundry list of reasons why I shouldn't and why I can't do this. Mm-hmm. But again, I go back to the feeling. The feeling is clear. So I put it all down in the basement. And it was kind of a, you know, any, any and this is not about putting your technology away. This is not a tool or technique. Like don't everybody go at home and be like, oh, I want to do this too. It's just my intuition told me to do it. It's mm-hmm. not like... Although sometimes it's really great to take a break from technology and all that good stuff. I'm not saying do or don't do that. But anyway, so I follow my intuition. I put it all down there. And there was all these unique experiences, like just having the space to not wake up with an alarm, which at the time I, I had been. I pretty much don't now. But, you know, I, I woke up in, in due time and, and I was like, what am I going to do today? <laughs> I don't have any friends to call. Like, you know, I, I, I'm sort of on my own and... And I said, well, I'm going to go for a run. Like that was the, the most, you know, clear I could get. And, and, uh, and then it occurred to me, I was like, wow, I really, I can't watch movies today. Like there's nothing for me to do. I'm going to have to like really entertain myself. Or, you know, I was like, what, well, what do I want to do? What do I love to do tonight? And I was like, I want to cook a roast because I love to cook. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to cook a roast. I'm going to take a bath. I started thinking of all these great ideas of like things that I would love to do since I'm not working. Anyway, I go to take, uh, to, to, I grab just like a few, I don't know if it was a few bucks or like my keys. I didn't have anything with me, right? I didn't have the normal things. I didn't grab a Metro card, for example. Like I don't really have anything mm-hmm. with me. I'm running. I've, I've got like, you know, a pocket this size. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I'm going out the door and I'm going to go right to the butcher because I think, well, I'm going to buy a chicken to roast for my favorite butcher. It's like, I love going there. And so I was like, that's where I'll run to. But as I was stepping outside the door, it was like, mm, go left. And I was like, well, that kind of throws a, a 
spanner in my works, but fine, I'll take a left. Like, and I, and I had this imagination. It was like, I envisioned this like long tree lined street that I'd never run on before, but always really wanted to. So anyway, I, I trust that I, I follow the, the, the feeling to go left and I am, I find myself running down this beautiful street and I've always wanted to run down. And I, I, the only time I ever see it is when I'm like driving in a taxi from a weird part of town. So I'm just having this great time and I, but it occurs to me, I keep getting these thoughts, you know, which I'm going to call limitations at the moment that are like, yeah, but you're running far away from the butcher. You're running far away from the butcher. You're running far away from the butcher. You know, the thinking Mm. that happens. And usually that kind of thinking is what I call like uncontrolled thinking. It's just like, right. That little voice in the head, the voice in the head, right? Yeah, but you're going farther away from the butcher, you know? And I'm like, shut up already. Like, clearly we're not going to the butcher. Like, give it a rest. You know, I'm like, now I'm talking to myself in my own head. And I'm like, shh, just stop. Yeah. But anyway, so the thoughts stop. I stop thinking and I just decide to go with it. And now I'm reaching what I call the flow. When you follow your intuition, you stop the thinking. There's like kind of an energy that you that you get, you know, there's a, you feel like, ooh, I'm in the zone. Like I'm in the flow. I'm not thinking about anything. Like anything can happen. It's like you're really connected to those more possibilities than sometimes you are. And usually it happens when a lot of people get into like a runner's flow or a lot of times it happens in sports, you know, when you're in the zone. Yes. That are impossible Mm -hmm. to shoot, you know, but he just. Creative realm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah creativity, all those things, yeah. like same dissolves energy, around you kind of thing. you're yeah. just in the moment, yeah. right? But it's an active feeling, you know, sometimes you can be just present, yeah. but the flow is like, usually there's an active energy to it. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm in the flow. And the next thing I envision is like the subway. And I'm like, I'm going to go down the subway. And I'm like, wow, this is a new experience. I don't have my Metro card. So I guess I'm going to, or my subway card because I'm in New York. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. I guess they do temporary passes, you know? So there's like kind of these new experiences. And, and, and now at this point, I don't know where I'm going because I don't have a destination in mind. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to take this train, you know, and I'll go into the city. Why not? You know, like I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So I get on the train and you got to remember, I don't have a phone to go to. So I'm not like looking on Facebook as I'm riding the train. I'm just feel really connected to everything and everyone around me. Kids are laughing, you know, people are connecting. There was like this guy with an accordion or something, you know, like coming in and out of the train. And it was just like, I felt so alive, yeah. you know, by just the simplicity mm-hmm. of like throwing the plan out the door, having no agenda or even place that I plan on going to. And I just this aliveness overtakes me, and I, I find myself on you know going across the bridge, which is like my favorite you know uh, line to go across the river with, and I can see my favorite buildings in New York, and I just am relishing it, and I'm feeling this like flow, you know, and this yeah. aliveness, and so then it hits me, I'm like. I'm going to go to Whole Foods and I'm excited. I mean, that may not be exciting to just everybody, but it was kind of a luxury we, at we the love time. We just love Whole Foods. I so. do. I love Whole Foods. Yeah. It's a happy place. It is a happy place. It really is. It is. Yeah. They, have, they have massages there. They, they have do? like the whole, oh yeah. Who has massages at Whole Foods? The little, the little Apparently, stands. Like you can get at the airport where they do your shoulders. Oh, yes. I don't oh, know if it's... Yeah. Whole what Foods Whole Foods are you going to? Hollywood? Uh, the one in, um, the one on Fairfax. Uh, I'm missing out on different this. Different Whole Foods do different things. I think the one in Venice has that too. Yeah, yeah. I, they, don't, I, they don't have them in St. Louis though. Oh, no, yeah. I think it's more of an LA. Thing. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all need massages. We're super stressed out here. Clearly. Yeah, there's, there's no massage parlors in the St. Louis Whole Foods, but, but there is in LA everywhere. Any, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so I'm excited to go to Whole Foods, especially because I just started this business. And so I'm not really giving myself like the luxury of like going into town, you know, I'm like really working hard and putting all my energy and effort into the business, you know? So for me, I was like, all right, well, here I am in town. And the couple things about Whole Foods is that first of all, there is this body wash that I can't get anywhere else other than Whole Foods, which I'd tell you what it is, but it's actually been discontinued <laughs> since this story took place, which is a real bummer because I really miss this body wash. But anyway, neither here nor there. Maybe it'll float back into my world in an, in another way. It's clearly not <laughs> well, that important. Well, you just throw it out there into the universe, so maybe you'll make it. I've thrown this story out a couple times, and it still hasn't Damn come back it, to really? me. So, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, it's duality, right? Sometimes it's you true. get a good result. Sometimes you get a bad result. You know, it's whatever. Um, 
Anyway, so I'm feeling alive. I go down and by this point I actually realize I'm really hungry. Now, I can't find a chicken that is uncooked in Whole Foods. Which by the way, that's not really a thing. Like if you go to Whole Foods, they're gonna have a, a, a raw chicken, whole chicken that you can buy. Yeah. I look all over the store all by myself and finally I solicit help. I say to the, you know, the, the guy that works there, I'm like, hey, raw chicken, wanna do a roast, where can I find it? Oh, sorry ma'am, we're all out. What? All out of raw wow. chickens, okay? This is really important. If you're pay, pay attention to this part. <laughs> All right. Cue the serious music. Dun dun dun. dun, dun. dun. <laughs> That's great. So there's no chicken, and and I and I was a little reactionary about it. I was like, you gotta be kidding me! Like if I just gone to the butcher, you know. So like now the voices in the head come back, right? The voices in the head are like, you know, you just gone to the butcher, you'd have a whole chicken, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Fine. Well, that's not what happened. So let's just accept this and move on. Mm-hmm. Pass through my disappointment, and I I find the rotisserie chickens, and again I happen to be hungry, so I was like, well, this is kind of perfect, you know. I get to eat some of my chicken, and then I'll reheat the rest of it later. Whatever, buy a few vegetables, and then I'm like, ooh, the body wash. Now the body wash is again a clear feeling. It's like there's an inspiration. There's like a, mmm, my body wash. This is great that I'm here because now I can get it. I go to the aisle because I'm like right around the corner, and I have this thought, and it's like, well. And and now I should preface this with I I told you I only left with the house with a certain amount of like cash and and monies or whatever like no credit card and so I didn't have that much money <laughs> you know and so I was like well I don't really need the body wash because I'm pretty sure like it's at least half full at home right mm-hmm. so I talk myself out of the body wash partly because my limitation of money right which I had enough to do it but I just thought to myself well you know, what if something happens on the way home or I don't know. It just, it's like, well, I don't really need that right now. So I'm just going to pass on that. But you're, st- you're still in the flow state. Totally. Okay. So this is all still flow. Totally okay. flow. Okay. But just like the negotiation of the flow, you know, it's like, I have a decision to make. Here we are. I get the sense that mm, I should, I wanted to buy the body wash. I felt it, but then it was like, well, I don't know how much money I have in my you know bank and I don't have my phone and you know, I don't really need it because I'm pretty sure I have, like, at least I have a bottle at home, so this is not important. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to move on. Anyway, so I've got my chicken, get a latte, what, standing over Union Square. And the other part of this is, like, then I step outside, I realize the farmer's market's going on, so then I buy, like, some vegetables, and I love the farmer's market. It was, like, one epic small little thing, in, you know, after another that just made me feel, like, so alive, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so I get done with all this and I'm like, all right, you know, it's time to go home. And I get back on the subway and you've got your and cooked chicken and you've got, got my your cooked latte, chicken, your vegetables, some vegetables. Massage. Yeah, my imaginary um, massage. And you have two pennies <laughs> to bring with you to the subway. <laughs> right. So you're on the subway then. On the subway back, and I just feel this like appreciation. You know, that's the thing about mm. intuition and flow is like usually it's like you don't have to be doing anything so great or epic or monumentous or you know reach some great life goal like flow state and if, when you follow your intuition is very much about the simplicity of just like this is just awesome for no reason mm-hmm. you know what I mean like I didn't succeed in anything that day I didn't climb a mountain I didn't you know there was nothing that I could give meaning to as being particularly like great about myself it just was like this is just being alive you know anyway so I get home and two things happen I think I like cleaned my apartment and like you know organized or whatever just kind of relaxed and and uh I turn the oven on and I go to put the chicken in there and then I think I like ran a bath or I don't know I was doing other stuff and I come back like maybe a half an hour later to check on the the chicken or maybe 20 minutes I don't know I can't remember and I'm like, wow, that's, that's not hot at all. And so like I kind of check around my oven and, and I'm looking in the things and it occurs to me, I'm like, oh, my oven is broken. I get the chills every time I tell the story. It almost makes me like a little verklempt. 
I'm like, wow, had I gone to the butcher and bought, according to my plan, what yeah. I thought was the best thing, I would have bought a raw chicken because they don't have rotisserie chickens at the butcher. Mm -hmm. And I would not have been able to cook the chicken that I had wanted to get had I not followed mm -hmm. the feeling to take a left out of my door instead of following the logical right. And for Whole Foods to not have any raw chicken, raw chicken. is even like more mind blowing. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and who knows? Maybe the store guy was incompetent. Maybe there was, you know, but for whatever reason, mm. I couldn't find it. He couldn't find mm. it, you know. Um, and, and, and again, like this is this is where it gets a little logical where you could start thinking about it. And you're like, well, but maybe the butcher also would have been out of the, 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 the raw chicken. I mean, you know, it's hard saying not knowing for anybody right. who's super logical. Like you can go down that rabbit hole as much as you want. And hey, good, good luck to you. But like from my experience, you know, I've, I've, there have been so many things that are uncanny. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could tell you guys stories for days about shit that's like, what? Yeah. So do you feel you have a natural intuition you and always have? Or is it something that, because I know you can develop it, right? It's 100% development and one, I mean, I, yes, I do feel like I have more an energy sensitivity. Mm. Like a lot of people talk about being energy sensitive. I can feel and sense people's energy if I, if I want to, like most of the time I'm like, I, I'm good. <laughs> like I'm going to stay with my own energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't need to, I don't need to know what's going on in your world. Like right. I have enough going on in my own world, you know? Right. But, um, but I can, yeah, I can walk into a room and sense like, ooh, what's the, what's going on mm -hmm. here? And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Most people can. Mm -hmm. um, but when you follow your intuition, it definitely is like a muscle. It's like working out at the gym. You, you get, you feel the niggle and you usually are like, oh yeah, that's the niggle, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and then when you follow it and you find the flow, you have a direct experience of the flow. And then it's like, that becomes more familiar mm -hmm. to you. What, what do you think the difference is between the between intuition and like sensory like your senses how, how do those how does that tie together do, do you think that intuition is following sensory or like how do you think that ties into that well they say that you know intuition is your sixth sense and which I remember we talked about yeah which I'm curious so so for me, yeah, it is kind kind of like that in in a way because you have, you're, you're but your your five human senses and they call them human senses for a reason. Your 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 five human senses relate to the physical world, right? right? So it's it's tangible. Mm -hmm. Intuition is totally intangible, right? It's a sense. It's a feeling. You can't see it. Right. You can't know that there is that that by taking a left that it's going to connect you with a cooked chicken and lead you down that road but the sixth sense is timeless it's it's not connected to logic in any way so it's almost like it kind of knows more than you do it's 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 energy yeah so the it, it connects with the energy of the butcher it can connect with the energy of, of whole foods I don't want to say that so much because I know that for some people are like, ah, oh, this is now getting woo woo. <laughs> like it's not an airy fairy thing. Like everything is energy. How else do you explain the fact that intuition took me to the the cooked chicken? You know. Um, I think I think what people could could gain from it though, especially is I think some, a lot of people probably have difficulty understanding what their their logic is mm -hmm. and what their intuition sensory is and, and kind of what those feelings what they are because a lot of us living in 2019 can't you know have trouble differentiating the two, differentiating the yeah two. and it's like how do I you do. i have a really hard time with that. i'm much more logical than i am like i never know if it's intuition that's talking to me or if it's Log i don't logic. know i live in like we're here i don't like turn that off and then i'm like wait let me just feel things i'm like Ugh, feel things Ugh. <laughs> yeah. well, no, thank you. Like you it, feel, feel is kind of a, 
feel is it doesn't have to be like like a because the way that you're talking about it's like ooh icky feelings like <laughs> yeah like emotions. <laughs> Well, because so, thinking would be more logic, you would think, and feeling would be more like emotion. Right. Intuition. Think of it less as feeling and more of like your sense. Like, for example, when you're having a conversation with somebody and you just can sense that like something's off about what they're saying. And it's like, are they telling the truth right now? It's almost like that. Like, mm. you almost sense like, that sounds like a little bit of a fib or like an exaggeration. You it's know like what I mean? Yeah, sixth sense. Like, so it's not necessarily... It doesn't have to be the word feeling if you don't like the word feeling. Like to me, it's like a sense. It's like I call bullshit on whatever that person is oh, saying. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's your yeah. sense. You just have a sense that like, or for example, I uh, my mentor uses this, and it's a, it's a good example. Like this woman, she was saying to her friend, she was making this really big decision, and her friend was like, "Yeah, but how do you know?" And it was like clearly like a big decision, like either a divorce or a new business or something like that. You know? She goes, "I don't know." I just know. That's intuition. It's like you just have a sense of something that you're supposed to do, like whether it's starting a new business or, you know, it could be creativity. Like a lot of people relate to intuition from the creative side. Yeah. It's like, ooh, you get this idea to do something and you're like, how come nobody's done this before? I can't believe nobody's even talking about this. Like, I'm going to do this. And then what happens, you know, usually after that is that that's when the logical mind will come mm -hmm. and say, well, but the last time you went on a limb, like you were rejected or right. you failed, it talks you or out of it. it talks you out of it, right? So you're you're thinking like the ego getting involved. The limitations stuff. of your ego will come along mm -hmm. and be like, mm -hmm. yeah, but here's the cons. Yeah. But here's the pros. But here's the cons. But here's the pros. Now you're stuck in logic. Now you have no idea what you mm -hmm. feel and sense and would love to do. Does that make sense? So it's. I yeah. It's connecting and staying with that sense and taking action on the sense right. the minute it comes. And, and you believe that, follow that. A hundred and fifty million percent. Okay. Mm. It's taking you somewhere. You don't know where it's taking you. And that's why I use the chicken story because it's so stupid. It's like, it's just about a chicken. Does it matter? Oh, and by the way, the last pump of my body wash came out. Interesting. Wow. Do you see what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know what I necessarily know. And right. and just for some of you who are like, yeah, yeah, intuition, like fluffy, 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 you know, it's it's think of it like this. Your your mind has so much sensory input coming in on a constant basis. If I were to shut my eyes and you were to ask me what's outside these windows, right? Like to me, I'll keep my eyes closed. I feel like a weirdo talking with my eyes closed. Like I would have to go back into my memory and think, okay, well, what is outside there? There's a house. Like, and if I were to really recall that information, I could probably get more information about what's outside than I would think that I could. You know, mm -hmm. I could probably describe what I think are probably the kinds of trees that I had seen. Like one of them kind of is like that eucalyptus style thing. I think the those are tiles on the roof, you know, there are, but then the Spanish style, you know, I think there's a satellite there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. eh, not quite a satellite, more like a, <laughs> what is that called? <laughs> like a transformer thing yeah but you know Electrical so transformer. but there eucalyptus trees you know but yeah. but your brain has so much access to information and what intuition does if you want to call it it's stored in your brain somewhere intuition is oftentimes the the thing that will connect you to more information than you can recall on a conscious level yeah if you want to go more scientific or like mind for some of you who are very logical you're like yeah 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 airy fairy like hocus pocus no 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 think about it like this like somewhere in my being i knew that there was only a squirt left of that that thing but yeah. i don't consciously recall that because it's not in my conscious awareness oh, right. it's somewhere in here though you know so so to give you now i can't explain the chicken thing that's 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 a that might be more on the the woo woo side but it doesn't mean that I don't experience it all the time. And that's the thing about intuition. When you do follow it, you'll start to experience it for yourself and you'll be like, holy shit. Well, it's kind of like the Mandela effect when we were talking about how we think we know mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, we're in control and we're going to plan our life. And like, this is, 
you only know the reality that you see and with the Mandela effect yeah there is the theory a very strong theory that we may not actually uh, that there's everyone's right no one's wrong <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. and then you start sure. going into like a massive rabbit hole when it comes to like what is reality and what's not yes mm -hmm. and are there actual such things as memories or are those things that we're creating in our own head that actually happens? You know what I mean? Like we start to really question our own reality and our own, our own thinking movie. and our own, right, our own we're, movie. We're all watching our own movie. Well, yeah. to me it's like, well, but and why does it matter? Like why does that memory, like why is that memory important? Mm -hmm. Whether it really happened or didn't really happen. I mean, for most people, at least who are interested in this genre of information have come to this conclusion, I think. Uh, maybe I'm so in this world that to me it's a foregone conclusion, but like you can't prove anything outside of this moment. Right. That's I right. literally cannot prove there is anything beyond this wall. That's right. right. Now I can tell you in my according to my memory, I came from a downstairs mm -hmm. and that my car is outside. That's right. And in the life story of duality in our life movie, that supports the story that it exists. But I could also walk outside and in the story my car was towed. Right. Right. It was transported somewhere, mm. potentially. How it got there, like, you can't prove anything ever actually has happened in the history of the world. Now, I know that's history really... doesn't... Uh, well... That's a dangerous <laughs> thought experiment, because a lot of people are like, well, what about the Holocaust and things like that? Forget about of, that a for a second. Uh, sure. Yeah. When, when, when people say that. But yes, there is the theory that it doesn't really exist. Yeah, like. And that's that's a little far out. The way that I like to say it is, I'm like, well, you just can't prove it. It's not that it doesn't exist. My car is outside, but it's more fluid than than you probably think it is, than than we as a collective conscious mm -hmm. think it is. Like, mm -hmm. you can't that's actually right. prove that there's anything outside of this moment. And this right, correct. That's all I'm saying. There may be a different parallel realm that we can't see that's happening beyond that our own minds can actually process. Uh, even more you know? simple than that, there is only right now. And that, I was about to say, this gets into the whole theory of, of, of the now. Right. And, and, this and is the it. present. You know, now we're, we're into to what is it, what what are the religions that talk about that? Is it Buddha, Buddhism that emphasizes the now being present? Because, because that is, uh, that is so essential and people are learning more and more all the time from what I read. Even the sci scientific too, like everything's happening right now rather than the future and, right. and the past. And so, people living stuck in the past, you know, where it's yeah. like, was that actually the past? And then their past changes. Well, that's why I was and saying, it's like, right. why does the memory matter? Right. It's because you have meaning in it. That's right. And, and the meaning mm -hmm. can be positive or negative. Yeah. You're, you know, the, the meaning of mm -hmm. what happened to you when you were five, you know, some family member left your family or whatever, and that becomes a meaningful, pivotal thing that shapes your world. It's how you interpret it. Okay, but does it really matter that that happened? Right. Well, it matters to you, but why? Right. You know, same thing right. with a positive thing. Like, I graduated from college. I have a college degree. That's a po that's what I've labeled as a positive experience. But at the end of the day, that memory, it doesn't really matter whether that's there or not unless I'm bringing it into this moment and creating my identity through yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Who cares whether that happened or not? Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, so that I can, like, my mom will be proud of me? Like, sure, my mom's going to be like, yes, she, my daughter is a college graduate. But that's her meaning. It's an interesting thought because, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of us come from all kinds of different families, right? that are, you know, great families and leave it to Beaver. And then you've got like the shit show, you know, like mm -hmm. my family <laughs> where you grow up and you're like, oh my God. And you get a little cynical. You're like, well, I had a terrible childhood or a difficult childhood. So it stays with you and it, it becomes who you are. Yeah. Yes. And it's actually a really good thought for people that have had, that go through certain things where you hold on to that. Yeah. And it's, you take it with you wherever you go. That's right. You know, but it, you allow it to define you or you don't. You're in control of whether it's defining you well, as a person. So I would say that the definition probably is rooted in the emotional experience that you're still having with mm -hmm. it in relationship to yeah. right. it. Because to me, 
Like there are things in my past that I don't hold on to simply because I've neutralized the emotions around it. And now it's like, well, it doesn't matter whether that's a memory or not a memory. It doesn't matter whether that, that it was an experience. It, it actually doesn't affect what I'm doing right now. Right. And so that's, that's the process of what I take my clients through is mm -hmm. like really the first part of like when I do a six month intensive, for example, it's like the first three months is like, look, you need to purge some of what you're holding yeah. on to and really f take the time to feel the emotions that you feel. Cause once you don't feel an emotional connection around somebody or something that you've accepted that that was what it was. Mm -hmm. And now you can move on to actually be here right now. Right. You know, you can't really live in the now if you're taking a bunch of baggage with you. It get, and it gets heavy. Sure. I mean, carrying that baggage around is, is like a ton of bricks, you know? Totally. And to tie that to, to following your, your intuition, living in the now is, is part of that, right? Totally. To channel the intuition, you, you, you kind of have to be in the now. In well, the think about it, right? Yeah. Okay, so going back to my example to make this simple and relatable for everybody. Hmm. If I have a huge emotional charge, like let's say when I was 15 years old, um, somebody died because, or somebody died in my family. And because I didn't have my cell phone on, my entire family, you know, uh, told me I was a terrible person and how could I, you know, be so irresponsible because uncle James died and you didn't even know it because we couldn't get into contact with you. You're such a selfish person. Why would you do this to your entire family? Now as a 15 year old, right, you're going to be brutally like affected by that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to think you're a bad person. You're probably going to have a negative emotional reaction to that. Yeah. Now, if my intuition tells me in a moment of inspiration, put your technology away, that's going to be a very different experience for, for somebody who's now an adult mm. to say, but I can't because, oh, and it's going to bring up a floodgate of, yeah. of memory and emotional, you know, attachment to a particular story that you experience that now holds you back from actually living free to do what you feel to do now. Mm. Take that and extrapolate that to every fucked up thing that's ever happened to yeah. you and how it possibly is impacting you from making a decision that you would love to do in this moment. And it doesn't have to be somebody else's like rejection of you or, or disappointment mm -hmm. or lack of love in you. It then becomes your own belief about yourself sometimes. Yeah. So it's like I'm having an emotional reaction because you almost have like, like consistent PTSD from the emotional things that right. happened to you, you know, where... You start letting it define you. Totally. So now, well, I can't do that. That's irresponsible. Now that's my own belief. But where did that even come from? Right. That's not irresponsible to simply put your tech. I mean, think about it from a factual basis, like putting your technology down in the basement for two days. Yeah. What is wrong with that? Right. No, what's wrong with it is the conditioning and the emotional experiences that you have around that. And the, let's just call it judgments. That's what they are. Mm -hmm. It's the meaning that you put in it. It's the meaning that you've experienced in the past. All those things are going to hold you back from doing what's in your heart right now, from accessing the flow, from following your intuition. And, and on top of that, it's also that big picture, which, which different religions interpret this differently as well, about how things like your story about going to Whole Foods, how things happen in a way how they were supposed to happen, or, or things happen sure. for a reason. And it reminded me, when you're saying your story, of a movie that I really liked. It got a lot of criticism, but I really liked it. And it was M. Night Shyamalan. Oh. He made a movie called Signs. And Signs was a farm in Pennsylvania that Mel Gibson played this farmer. And aliens came and attacked. And during, as it leads up to these <laughs> aliens, you see certain things around the farm. Like, I, I don't remember it all specifically, but, like, the sun... The, the older son kid had a had like a cold and he was like blocking his his nose and then um, the daughter was always leaving water glasses around the house and it was annoying and they didn't know why she was always drinking water and leaving around the house. Well, when the aliens then invaded, the they would knock the water over and it like killed the alien. And the way he put po the aliens tried to poison him was through his nose and his son was able to block it because he had been blocking his nose because of the cold. But it had that bigger picture of like the aliens couldn't attack because of things that had happened around the farm mm. that they then realized in retrospect, which is sure. really what kind of yours was. Like, whoa, this goes back to your oven and such. And it, so it's just like that. It reminded me of that movie he made, which a lot of people when movies made didn't 
even see that th that's what the movie was. Um, well, I, first of all, I didn't even know that, and I've yeah. seen that movie like eight hundred times. Oh yeah, that was. Was the that pre message. or post Mel Gibson's snafu in the world? Pre. pre. Okay. This was Joaquin pain. Phoenix is in it. He's hilarious. Yeah. With his I feel like I need to go see this. Now. But I had no idea. Oh yeah, people didn't get it, and I'm like, this is a great movie, and everybody else is like, what are you talking about? Just I feel dumb. Dumb. Farm is dumb. <laughs> is, I feel dumb. There's a whole underlying message there. That so that's cool. Talking. And the same with The Happening that he made. But I love, yeah. he's one of my favorite directors. But yeah, right. Don't like. But anyway, it reminded me of, of that. Um, so everything, your story, which is wonderful, and, mm -hmm. and everything you're saying, that ties into to your coaching and, and, and getting people to, you try to help people have the it guide them. And also you have this decisive person's secret. That, so it all ties into that, right? When you're coaching people, is the decisive person's secret? Can you tell us the secret? Secret, or is that what does that relate to exactly? I think I mean the reason why I put it as like a six-week course is because it's it you know, in like just like this conversation, right? I could say the answer is intuition. But until I give you the context and the reference points of what that actually means, you know, it's meaningless, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to hit you in your own direct experiences and reference points of your own life to be like, oh, I get what she's talking mm -hmm. about. Okay, limitations coming from the past based on an emotional reaction is what holds me back from acting on what I want to do mm -hmm. now. Right, which is where the logic comes, because logic mm -hmm. is always to protect you in sort of a sim sort of a way. You know, it's like it weighs out the pros and cons of things. Right, that's a relatable thing. But the reason why I make it six weeks is because there's all these different reference points of the ways that people make decisions, the 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 things that come up around decision making. You know, it, it's like yeah, the the simplest version is if you know who you are, and you're very connected with your intuition and you don't think a lot about the decisions that you're making, that's the decisive person's secret, but that doesn't mean anything. Those are just words, right. you know? Of so that's, I mean, that's the secret, but yeah. who lives like that, you know? I do, and so what I do is I take people on, on this experience of, you know, okay, this is, this is what you gotta, you gotta get through this in order to get through that, in order to be able to see your intuition, mm -hmm. in order to be able to act on it. And it's not just about intuition, it's, it's just, it's observing the patterns that you personally have with the way that you make decisions. Like there's nothing wrong with the way that anybody makes decisions, but you might think there is. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm indecisive. You know, one of the biggest things that I tell people, I'm like, nobody's indecisive. Everybody knows exactly what they want, mm -hmm. period. It's really simple. Like everybody really actually knows what they want to do, but what gets in the way? It's those things that, again, the Basically past that judgments. you don't even realize, right? Because you just say to yourself, I'm not going to do that. You don't even know why you feel a resistance to doing mm -hmm. that. You know, there, there's not even an openness enough for, you, for, for some people to be like, well, why am I so resistant to this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the interesting part. It's like you feel this resistance and you're like, mm, no, I'm not doing that, you know, but you don't even know why. Like resistance, by the way, is a huge indicator of where you have some sort of emotional fucked up Lock, around something. Right. Yeah. right, because otherwise yeah. there would be no resistance. You would just be like, oh, that's an option and that's an option. But, you, you know, mm. for a lot of people, it's like, no, I would never do that. Whoa, take Why it not? easy. Yeah. Why not? Like, what's wrong with that? Well, it's obvious what's wrong with that. You know, you just don't do that. Well, okay, but why not? Mm. Why don't you do that? You know, and I'm not talking about, like, murder or, or whatever. But, you know, just like, I just don't wear pink lipstick. Day to day, yeah. Right. Like I used to, uh, as an example, I used to be very adamant. Like I am not getting married. Like, Absolutely no. And I was like seven years old when people were like, no, 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 you'll. And I never, never wanted to do that ever. That just was not something I ever wanted to do. And um, and then I realized it was because of what I watched in. I in was your like, own There's experience. no way I'm gonna get in this shit show. Yeah. And you didn't know. And people were like, no, 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 you'll get older. And like. 
no way am I getting married and dealing with that kind of craziness. You know, yeah. you don't know where certain things come from. Yeah. You know, and that's what's really interesting. I wonder though, your clients that you deal with, I have to imagine there's so much that everyone kind of blocks that like, where do you even begin to help release all that? Well, that, that's why I usually do like a six month intensive for somebody yeah. who's more on a, on a, has been on a self-awareness journey for a little, for a little while. Like we might be at a different starting point okay. um, to where they, there is sort of a, um, maybe there's a familiarity with their emotions already. Maybe they have, you know, a sense. And then it just becomes about, okay, well, if you don't have that many blockages, like, then who are you? It becomes more of a journey of connecting to the bigger picture of who you are and really yeah. acting on your intuition on a on a more regular basis, becoming more familiar. But yeah, the 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 first you know three months of when I do an intensive with somebody is, is usually looking at what are those blockages, Got you know, it. Okay. and and it comes up in the everyday to answer your question mm. specifically. What did you do today? How are you feeling? <laughs> right. You know, and usually something happened at work. Right. You know, well, this is what I happened. Okay, so how do you feel about that? You know, and then it becomes a process of it's it's never the first answer. It's like, well, I feel angry about that. Yeah, okay, well, tell me unpack about that. It. You know, yeah. you unpack it about seven layers deep, you get to this core emotion. You know, and then mm, interesting. you can move through so it. So do you do that in your own life when like something happens, do you unpack it in your own of like Okay, I had a bad, you know, someone hit my car, let's say, or someone's hit, hit you on your way home. Pray to God that doesn't happen. But let's say you get in a car accident and you get rear-ended, right? I know, knock on wood. Um, sorry, it was a terrible example. I just realized. That's all right. It's Los um, Angeles. You know? Yeah, I know it happens. It's funny, though, because I haven't gotten in an accident in like 20 years. So, like, the. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I know, I know, I know. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. Because it's like one of those things, like you like literally yeah. take your life You're into your own hands in yeah. Los Angeles, you know? So You're true. like, and I'm such an aggressive driver that like good for better or yeah. worse, like that's a good thing sometimes in LA because yes, you're all constantly on the defense and you will like get in an accident otherwise. Yeah. But anyway, we that's what the Kiras do. We're aggressive what? drivers. You Kiras. Do I yes. unpack? Yes. Yeah. So like, okay, you get an accident, someone rear ends you. If I have an emotional reaction, but here's the thing: the more that you live like this actually you don't have as much of a reaction to mm. things or it's a lot smaller you know what i mean yeah. it's like it's like oh, it is I mean, what it, it happens. is yeah you what know you and and not like in the you know something terrible just happened well it right. is what it is right. you know <laughs> yeah. i mean like even something positive happens I always put my attention mm. on, well, it is what it is. It's a different lens, kind of, in mm. a way. You're seeing it's, things through, through a new... For example, my mom asked me, you know, there's a, I've had a relationship that's been, you know, a little tumultuous, and she goes, well, that's good, right? Like, you know, he said that, that's good. Mm. And I'm like, maybe. Right. Maybe it is, and not because I'm not emotionally connected to, to my story, but, but because... It's like, well, I don't really know if that's... It's not really good or bad to me. It's just like, it is. It is, right. You know, it is. It is. Right. Isness. It's, it, is. it becomes, it is. But don't get me wrong. Yeah, if I have an emotional reaction to something, or like, for example, I'll give you a personal example that, that'll be relatable. Like, I noticed that I was seeking validation from somebody outside of myself the other day. Mm. And I was like, huh. I can, I'm feeling a little discomfort with this person, and I can see that it's because I'm looking for validation. So my unpacking of that is simply the awareness of, okay, how do I bring my energy back into, well, where in my life do I feel valid? Mm -hmm. You know, connecting with the feeling of feeling valid within myself that has nothing to do with anybody else and looking at the areas of my life that I, you know, get recognition or not necessarily like recognition, but just like that I feel valid in, that I feel comfortable in, that I feel a sense of, Validity, or I don't know. That's such a bad, it's a weird word to use. I think, but yeah, you know sense. what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. so I'll unpack that through the awareness of observing that's happening. See, that's interesting. I and I've always said um, the way we relate to other people. For example, um, if there is um, a cashier that's kind of bitchy, and you're like kind of getting, you know, you're checking out, you're buying milk and cheese or whatever, and she's just like, 
and you kind of take it personally. Yeah. And then you leave, and then you think she was pissed at you, <laughs> and it's like it has nothing to do with you. That's their own. It's thing your own. You're attaching yeah. your own personal feelings toward. That mm-hmm. person's dad may have just died that morning. Sure. You have no idea what people are going sure. through. Yet it's this personal, you absorb it. And then on top of that, you take those feelings of like, wow, she was kind of a bitch. And then subconsciously, you're now going to go and be kind of rude to someone else. Unless you're aware of what is going on in the pattern, the domino effect of that. Well, l- let me throw something else in there because a lot of times people will be your reflection, if you will, Mm -hmm. in the sense that like somebody's being bitchy and you can Mm -hmm. easily see the bitchiness in somebody else, but you can't see the way that you're bitchy with other people. That happens so much. Yeah. Yeah, that happens all the time. So it's it's one of those two things. You either take take things personally and 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 you know you're 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 creating a story that's happening that isn't really happening because you're you're feeling insecure or you're not connected to the security that you that you're not feeling centered. Yeah. Because when you're feeling centered, you're like, this has nothing to do with me. Right. Even if it has to do with me, it has nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I might be, I my red lips might remind this guy of his ex-wife, you know, and he's like, right. fuck, this fucking, you know, right. woman. This guess that you know, Jeff like, decided and, to bring on. Right. <laughs> it, that yeah. is still not my story. Right. That's his, that's yeah, it has his, nothing to do with that's you. his emotional experience. Yeah. Um, but right. a lot of times I find it more commonly or equally as common is, is when it's actually something that you don't, you don't like that in somebody else, but you can't see that you have it. That's so <laughs> interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah. So that's what I do with my clients is like, they'll tell me a story and I'm like, let's dissect this. Let's get into the, is it this? Is it this? Like, how are you, you know? And then, and we come to a point of it and then there's the, the aha moment yeah. of like, fuck that is, I am that. Yeah. That must be so exciting when you get your clients to that point where you're like, and ta da! Like <laughs> you know, like when, yeah. the aha moment, and they all feel like, oh. Yeah. You're almost like, like throwing up from like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just like, Ugh. and now you're like, oh, I feel better now. Like, I, I got sick, <laughs> yeah. and now I feel better. Yeah, but you gotta remember, it's a painful process because oh, you have yeah. to be willing it's like to a throw up. It's literally a, like a cleanse. Yeah. yeah. Like a, like a, yeah. Removing of the because because yeah. nobody wants to be a piece of shit, you know. Yeah, like right. <laughs> right. nobody wants to be an asshole. You're like, but that guy's an asshole. I'm like, well, how are you an asshole? Yeah. You know. And it's like, a, yeah, oh my the god, I them. am an asshole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and my right. first thing to everybody on the planet is just like, look, everybody's ego is an asshole. Like it's not personal to any one of us. Like. Yeah. It's protection. It's trying to keep you safe. It's trying mm. to make you feel valid in yourself. Like, your ego has agendas for a reason. It's trying to give you love. And and the thing is, is that we associate love for some people as control. If they grew up in a controlling household mm-hmm. and yeah. then they control other people, they feel love. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. it's it's not like there's no judgment on anybody being an asshole. If anything, like I'm like I'm a piece of shit. Everybody's a piece of shit. You know, like because <laughs> I love there that. is yeah. a part yeah. of us that is. Yeah. That, it, that takes that yeah. form and it will do anything that it can to it really yeah. make sure that we're getting love. Right. And and when you realize that, it's not, it's like, oh, all right. It's not a personal attack. That's right. just being a human being. Now, yeah. Now, are there things that people, we have to wind down in the next five minutes because we're pushing an hour, but but, uh, but this is We're loving. pushing an hour? Is, are there any, <laughs> any anything that people can do at home? Because um, obviously not everybody can, can meet with you, though we know they would love to. Mm. Is there something they can do at home to get in touch with this in- intuition side? Are there things like meditation and yoga? How much do those help? How much do those play into to increasing their awareness? Mm. You know, about. as I said in the beginning, like being in your body, however gets you there. Like some people don't like yoga, so don't do yoga. You know, some people, I really like to run. I know if I'm like processing something, you said, you know, yeah. unpacking. Sometimes I don't even know what it is and I just have to go run. And I'll run and I'll run and I'll run. And then I'll just notice like I, there's a little release that might happen. You know, I might have a few tears or something or um, uh, whatever gets you in your body. You know, that could be meditation. 
but again, not thinking meditation, like literally focusing. I, I, I have a, I think I have a meditation that you can buy on my website actually that's really short and it's like a, okay. it's like to get in your body. It's like an emotional, it's like a scan. And if not, like mm-hmm. reach out to me and I'll create one for you. Like it's simple. It, sometimes it's just five minutes of like not moving. Mm-hmm. And not thinking and not rushing off to go chase your dreams right. or find your next husband. Like, just stopping mm-hmm. to just sit and do nothing. In the moment. Yeah. Just do nothing. Don't think about anything. And I know that's hard because you're like, well, I can't stop thinking. If, if I stop, could stop thinking, like, that would be the end of all my problems, you know? And I, I hear you. I understand. I can relate. <laughs> Part of where the thinking comes from is unpacked emotions, if you want to know the yeah. truth. Yeah. Because you're thinking about the things that give you the shits, right? right. Like, yeah. those are your emotions. Those are your judgments. You're thinking about the things that you worry about. You're thinking about the things that concern you. Those are all your mm-hmm. judgments. Those are all your limitations, if I could be blunt, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's being in your body. Yeah, doing anything that you can't stop. Mm-hmm. Just sit on your sofa for, like, 10 minutes without watching TV. Mm-hmm. And just notice what your thinking is. What are you even thinking about? Because that's where all your stuff is, usually. Are you a believer in that app like Headspace? Have you heard of that? Whatever. And you can use anything. anything. Music. Music. Exercise. exercise. Do anything. Like, like that's how I do it. You know, I just sit and I watch my thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Headspace talks about, like, cars on the highway or clouds going by just... That, those are your thoughts, just like watching a highway. Mm. Cars go by. Visualizing each. But the content, the yeah. content of your thoughts gives you a lot of clues as to where you're at. Mm. Yeah. You know, it'll, it'll show you because you'll, what do most people think about? Sex, money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dating, whatever. When, yeah, I'm, when am I going to meet the person that I really want to meet? Mm-hmm. How come I haven't met the person that I'm going to meet? Um, oh, ha- paying bills, Family, you know, yeah. yeah uh, my sister, you know, my, my so-and-so's dying. Like whatever the, the thing that's bothering you, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's where your stuff is. That's what you want to unpack. Well, thank you. It's so amazing. I feel like we need a part um, two with Kira. And like not because do. her name's Kira, but because <laughs> we need a part two because it's so fascinating. It's just because my name is Kira. I mean, Don't lie. And, and you go over. Kira times bit. two. Kira times two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, part two and three and four. Like, we, we could do multiple Kira Kira episodes. YouTube keeps me at an she hour, which is too why well. I have to like sure, sure, sure. end it. But um, Kira Sherman... Her website is <laughs> thedeeperspark.com. Yes. She does intuition coaching, all sorts of amazing <laughs> intuition, everything you just heard. This is Jeff and, and Kira. And I'm Kira. And Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Launch radio. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Talk Have to you guys soon. Day. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to